The Lenovo Duet Chromebook promises a fantastic value. It offers a desktop glass browser, a keyboard, Android and Linux app support as well as a stylus option. We get all of that for under $300. But how well does it compete in real life against the iPad 7 which has been the best value so far? I'm NJ from MyNextTablet.com and that's what we will discuss in this iPad 7 with the Stuart Chromebook comparison. <laughs> Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I'm reviewing pretty much every tablet that gets released, all from Chrome OS to Android to iPadOS and Windows tablets, of course. Let's start with their design and build quality. Regarding this, the Lenovo Duet Chromebook and Apple iPad 7 are quite similar. Not perfect, both have some downsides, but overall, they do feel like well-made tablets. The iPad 7 is made of aluminum and is premium feeling. It just does not look as high-end, because it has the old design with huge black bezels and the home button on the bottom. On a positive note, it does have the Touch ID fingerprint scanner, which works great. The Lenovo does not have a fingerprint scanner and no facial recognition. On the Duet Chromebook, the biggest part of the body is metal too, but part of the tablet is covered by a blue plastic. It certainly looks unique. The transition from the body to the screen is not as smooth as on the iPad, but it's not too much of a deal. With 483 grams, the Apple tablet is a bit heavier than the 450 grams of the Lenovo. It's also a tiny bit thicker with 7.5 millimeters compared to 7.3 millimeters. Both have connectors for optional keyboards, but the iPad is the only one with a headphone jack. While the Lenovo has a USB-C port, the iPad has the old lightning connector. A micro SD card slot is missing on both. Let's check out the keyboards. A huge advantage of the Duet Chromebook is that the keyboard is included at no extra charge. That means that with a price tag of $279, it's much cheaper. For the iPad alone, you will have to pay $329. The official smart keyboard costs another $159. I'm only going to compare the official keyboards because in both cases, you could connect almost every other keyboard anyways. Overall, the Apple Smart Keyboard feels a bit better made. It's mostly plastic, of course, but a higher-end one. Folded up, the keyboard protects the screen, but the back is unprotected. This keyboard folio has a stand feature built in, but you can use it at just one angle. I typed a lot with the Apple Keyboard and it's usable, but certainly not great. The keys don't have a lot of travel, there's no background light, and no touchpad either. I always described it as a good compromise of comfort and portability. It's a fine tablet keyboard, but if you write all day, I would use a proper desktop class keyboard. The Lenovo keyboard feels cheaper and it's a different design. There's a back cover with an integrated kickstand included, which you attach to the tablet magnetically. While it's made of a much cheaper feeling plastic, it works well and has one huge advantage. Unlike with the iPad, you can stand up the Duet Chromebook in lots of different angles. That's awesome. The keyboard part attaches magnetically and is made of plastic too. Folded up, it protects the screen so that both sides of the tablet are protected. Now, even though the keyboard is made of a cheaper feeling material, the keyboard itself is better. Here, the keys do have a proper travel, which is more comfortable. We don't get a background light either, but there's a decent touchpad built in. So overall, I think the Lenovo offers a better keyboard. I mean, especially if you consider the price, it's a much better keyboard value. But keep in mind that both keyboards are smaller than your standard desktop keyboard. If you're working at home at your desk, I would always connect a bigger one using Bluetooth. I like that the two speakers of the Lenovo are located at the top and are separate from each other. That means you can hear a real stereo separation, which is not the case with the iPad. Apple placed both speakers on one of the shorter sides, so the sound is coming from just one side when watching movies. Even though that's a downside, the iPad speakers do sound much better overall. The sound is clearer, fuller, has a better bass and is just more pleasing to listen to. The Duet Chromebook features a 10.1 inch IPS screen with an aspect ratio of 16 by 10 and a resolution of 1920 by 1200 pixels. The iPad 7 has a 10.2 inch IPS screen with 2160 by 1620 pixels. Both screens are quite similar, but if you look closely, the iPad 7 is a bit sharper. It's also a bit brighter with 500 nits compared to 400 nits. 
viewing angles are good on both. So the iPad screen is a bit better regarding most aspects, at least a bit, with one big exception. It does not have a laminated screen. That means there's a small visible air gap below the touchscreen. The screen of the Lenovo is fully laminated, which looks nicer. Now the non-laminated screen is not too much of an issue unless you want to use the Apple Pencil. When using that stylus you don't always have the feeling of directly writing on that screen because there's an air gap in between. Besides that the Apple Pencil works fantastic, it's pressure sensitive and is well made and you can write and draw with it very precisely as long as you ignore that air gap. You can charge it using the lightning port of the tablet. You can use a USI stylus with the Lenovo Duet Chromebook. The only one I was able to buy is the HP USI stylus. It works okay, you charge it using a USB-C cable and it's pressure sensitive just like the Apple Pencil. Here you are touching the screen directly which is a plus point. But with that being said, if you write fast it's not as precise as the Apple Pencil is. Handwritten text does not always look as clear and the drawing often lags behind the screen a bit. Both are not huge issues but something you should definitely know about. So to sum up, both tablets are not perfect regarding their pens, but in both cases they are nice additional features. One advantage of the iPad remains that you can use the Apple Pencil with lots of more apps than you will find in the Google Play Store. If you want to make super fine and precise drawings, you should invest a bit more money in a tablet with better pen support though. Let's check out the internal hardware and performance. The Lenovo Duet Chromebook features a MediaTek Helio P60T octa-core processor with 4GB of RAM and a 64GB or 128GB internal storage. There's no LTE version at the moment. Inside the Apple iPad 7 on the other hand runs an Apple A10 Fusion processor with 3GB of RAM. You can choose between 32GB and 128GB of internal storage and LTE is an option too. Benchmarks show that the iPad 7 is much faster in pretty much all regards. That's to be expected because the iPad 7 is faster than every mid-range Android tablet as well. My gaming test confirms this. While you can play games like PUBG Mobile and Call of Duty on the Duet Chromebook, they run with high settings only. On the iPad 7 you can set the graphics to very high in both cases and they do look a bit better. Apple's tablet is a fantastic device to play Fortnite with too, which is not possible on the Chromebook. With other tasks the iPad performs a bit better too. You can switch between apps faster and even render videos in an ok speed. But if you just want to do some office work and watch some YouTube, you won't notice any major differences between the two. Now the operating systems are very different of course. The Duet Chromebook is running Chrome OS which is promised to get updates until June of 2028. It means that it will be updated much longer than any Android tablet will be. And it might get longer updates than the iPad 7 as well because the A10 Fusion platform is a couple of years old already. With Chrome OS you get a desktop class browser which performs very well and is great for web apps like Google Docs and Gmail. At the same time you can use Android apps from the Google Play Store which usually perform great too. I installed a couple of games as well as Adobe Lightroom and all of that runs fine. In addition to those Android apps you can also install traditional Linux desktop apps like LibreOffice for instance. Now for that you've got to use a terminal and to want to install and use those you probably have to be kind of geeky but it can be awesome for students who want to become a developer for instance. An advantage of Chrome OS is that you can use it pretty much like a desktop PC once you attach a keyboard and mouse at least. You can open apps in free floating windows for instance. That's what Chrome OS was developed for originally. All those tablet features have been added later. The iPad 7 is running iPad OS which has been developed with tablets in mind from the beginning. In fact as a pure tablet operating system iPad OS is much better thought through. You can navigate the operating system with gestures very fast, it's easy, very stable and there's a huge selection of apps that are optimized for tablets. Exactly this is the big advantage of iPadOS. The selection of apps that are optimized for touchscreens and tablets in particular is much larger than the Google Play Store can offer. You can choose between lots of notes apps, drawing apps, thousands of great games, music apps and even very professional ones like Adobe Photoshop and Affinity Photo. 
You can use fantastic video editors as well as apps like Microsoft Word and Excel. Now Safari is a fantastic browser too, which has been quite heavily updated in the last couple of months. By now you can use it with web apps like Google Docs and they do run as good as they do in Chrome OS. So you do get a desktop glass browser now too, but you can't use the same extensions of course. iPadOS is lacking behind a bit if you want to use your tablet as a traditional computer. It has been improved a lot with recent updates, multitasking works fantastic now, we get a decent files app and you can connect a mouse or touchpad and even attach external storage like SSDs. But if you want to get super geeky, you do get more options with Chrome OS. I mean you can install Linux apps, the iPad can't beat that. If you care about battery life, you will get a longer runtime with the iPad 7. When watching HD YouTube videos at maximum brightness, the Apple tablet lasts 5 hours, while the dual Chromebook goes dark after 4.5 hours. Keep in mind that the iPad has a brighter screen, so its battery life is even better than this test shows. Well, that's the end of my comparison of the Apple iPad 7 with the Lenovo Duet Chromebook. I think both tablets offer a fantastic value. Which one is better for you depends on how much money you want to spend and especially on what you want to do with a tablet. I think the iPad 7 is the better entertainment tablet. It's much faster for playing games, has better speakers for watching movies and it has a much bigger selection of apps in general that are optimized for tablets. If you're looking for a cheap tablet with pen support, I think the iPad is the bit better choice too. It's not perfect, but at least you're getting lots of great apps for the stylus. And if you want to get some office work done, you can do that with apps like Microsoft Word, but you will have to pay much more for the keyboard. The Lenovo Duet Chromebook is the better choice if you're looking for an affordable tablet with keyboard. I think the value is fantastic if you want to do some office work, maybe for school or just while traveling. And sure, at the same time you can play some games and watch movies, all of that is possible, just not as good as with the iPad. For some, the Linux support is a fantastic feature too. Alright, that's the end of my comparison between the Lenovo Duet Chromebook and the Apple iPad 7. If you have any questions, write them down below in the comments. I'm NJ from MyNextTablet.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.